Okay guys, so today we're going to be talking about how I set up my bushcrafting knives. Now, I've ran just a couple knives in my time as a bushcrafter, so I thought it'd be interesting to kind of make a video breaking down the type of equipment that I like to run with my bushcrafting knives, as well as the types of sheaths that I try to run with them. So as always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. More content just like this. Okay, let's jump right into this. Okay, so I'm going to have these knives set over here just for a little while so we can talk about uh, these three primary knives and why I chose the setups they have and, like I said, the preferred equipment that I carry with them. So by no means is this an extensive list, and I think that when we talk about um, bushcrafting knives as a whole, uh, you know, th these tools and how they're set up with their sheaths isn't designed to be the fix for everything. You know, it's impossible to set up a knife just with its sheath in itself to be able to solve any problem. Of course, you know, you want to carry things such as saws, hatchets, axes, and uh, other equipment that will make your bushcrafting abilities more effective. Of course, it's more like a tool kit or a tool belt as opposed to just one singular tool handling every single problem. That being said, uh, let's talk about some sheath preferences. Now, as you guys can probably tell here, I definitely lean pretty heavy towards leather. Not only because I like leather, and I think leather is a kind of good traditional option, but also because a lot of these knives here are set up to be ran as neck knives under the shirt against my body. And whenever I'm running neck knives, leather is so much more comfortable. I mean, just as a whole, even when it comes to concealed carry holsters and such, anything that is coming up against my body or that is, you know, touching me as a whole, I like it to be soft. I like it to be uh, malleable. I like it to move. So I don't like hard plastic sheaths kind of like these because they are very uncomfortable when they're up against your body. In addition to that, there are also plastic sheets like this when they're up against your body are not breathable and so that you end up with things like sweat spots and overall just discomfort all around. So leather sheets like these are ultimately um, the way to go whenever it's going to be up against my body and or, you know, in close proximity to my body with, you know, a kind of rig like that. So that's what I have to choose for sheath materials or my top option for sheath materials. Leather is more expensive, but on some of these more expensive knives, usually your standard sheath is leather and leather for good reason. And if it's not, you should probably consider getting leather. <laughs> okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about preferred equipment. Now, honestly, for me, there's really not that much preferred equipment that I have going into a bushcrafting knife. Uh, starting off with the knife itself, usually I try to leave the blade uh, unfinished, and if it does get a finish, it's usually blued in some regard to help with rust prevention, because most of these blades are high carbon or tool steel, so they rust. But usually, leaving the blade just a patina, like this, like such, is the way I prefer to go. But aside from that, how I will set up the blade is I usually try to have a smaller um, kind of pull related uh, lanyard. So with a lot of these blades, I don't necessarily have a lanyard in use for, you know, putting my hand through. It's just to help me access or index the blade better. So especially when I have a blade um, in a baldric rig or even under a shirt, it's so I can find that knife easier, get it back onto the handle and pull it out of its sheath. And so that's usually why I have lanyards, but that is what I run with the knife. Now for the sheath itself, I like to keep it as basic as possible. There will usually be either a dangler or some type of rigging. This is a baldric rig. Those have uh, neck, uh, kind of, these have more necklace styled paracord rigs. And then I will usually run or try to run at all times a ferro rod. I think all of my main duty bushcrafting knives should be able to strike ferro rods and I like having a ferro rod because once you learn how to use them for ferro rod fires, it's a very reliable and reasonably easy way to start fires. So of course, like I said, that's kind of parroted along all of these three mainline bushcrafting knives, a small retentionary or a small um, lanyard to help me access my blade better and pull it out of the sheath with ease or with less frustration and of course um, 
I have a ferro rod on the back of the sheath to help with starting fires. So, like I said, same across the line. Uh, this one's a little bit smaller of a lanyard, but it kind of just helps me access that blade that much easier. This one is blued slightly to help with rust prevention, and of course, uh, they all have ferro rods with them. Ironically, they're all the same ferro rod. If you guys couldn't tell, I do have a bit of a preference towards um, Light My Fire armies, and all of these are orange for high vis, even though some of them are a little bit dirtier than others. They actually all look pretty good on the camera, but some are definitely a little bit uh, dirty and dingy. But they're all orange for high vis, so that if I ever lose them, they are easy to find. And of course, all of them have orange lanyards connecting them to their knives, uh, because once again, high visibility, and I want to be able to see them and find them if they go missing. So that is how I set my mainline bushcrafting knives up.